Okay, hugely important topic today, uh, inflammation. Inflammation is the root cause of pretty much every disease known to man, especially when it comes to degenerative illnesses, which I'll take you here uh, through in a few minutes. And uh, the reason this is so important uh, to know your inflammation levels and get this tested so you can do something about it. So we're going to talk about C-reactive protein, CRP, and then also vitamin D3, uh, why these are 1 and 1A in terms of the levels that you should absolutely 100% know beyond a shadow of a doubt in your body. So inflammation, uh, most people think of inflammation as just being like joint pain, back pain, like an itis or an arthritis or a sprained ankle or something like that. But inflammation, there's a lot more to it than just that. There's systemic inflammation as well. So there's inflammation of the brain that can cause Alzheimer's disease. There's inflammation of the arteries that causes heart attacks and strokes. All of it comes back to inflammation, which you'll see in a couple of minutes. So that's why this is hugely important. Uh, Time called this uh, the the silent killer. Inflammation is called the silent killer because you might know that you have arthritis in your knee because you feel it all the time, but you don't feel things like silent inflammation. So this is the surprising link between inflammation and heart attacks, cancer, Alzheimer's. You're not feeling inflammation in your brain, even though you're absolutely experiencing it. Um, that will cause Alzheimer's disease. So it's called the silent killer, which is why it's so important that you we know what your inflammation levels are. We don't guess about what those are. So inflammation is a, it's a response to a harmful stimuli. Okay, so small levels of inflammation or, or um, short periods of inflammation are good. All right, so if I uh, sprain my ankle and I get that big swelling there, that's my body healing itself. But if it stays swollen, that's a bad thing. You start getting tissue damage in that area. But long-term inflammation, we're talking tissue damage in any area. So if I have long-term inflammation of my joints, then that's going to cause arthritis and degeneration and, and all kinds of bone spurs and fragments. But if that's happening in your arteries or if that's happening in your brain, you're getting the same long-term damage. You're just not feeling it. So short-term signs are going to be things like pain, swelling, soreness, fatigue, itchy skin, redness, heat, right? It's going to be hot. Even gut issues like ulcerative colitis or IBS or, you know, diarrhea, those are inflammation things, right? Those are obvious inflammation things. But elevated CRP levels, they don't have an outward noticeable symptom, right? So you could have elevated CRP levels without feeling any of those other things. This elevated CRP is looking at long-term inflammation, and that's what's linked to these things. Cancer, right? Increase your risk of cancer by up to three times having elevated uh, CRP levels. Cardiovascular disease, the same thing. It's not the cholesterol that causes heart disease. It's the inflammation of the arteries. So um, there's, a, there's a research study they done in a New England Medical Journal a while back, and they found that people had heart attacks with, more people had heart attacks with low cholesterol than high cholesterol. So more people had heart attacks with cholesterol under 200 than over 300. So if cholesterol, high cholesterol causes heart attacks, why is that happening? The reason it's happening is because it doesn't have anything to do with the cholesterol. It has to do with the inflammation. Because if you have inflamed arteries, then that cholesterol has something to stick to and cause those, those blockages of the arteries that cause a heart attack. Same thing, stroke, infection, autoimmune disorders, rheumatoid arthritis, lupa, infl lupus, inflammatory bowel disease, depression has been linked to inflammation. Alzheimer's, I just told you about, linked to inflammation. Um, and, and I shouldn't say linked. I shouldn't say caused by. All right. So it, it, it's not a surprising thing that inflammation causes these things if you just know what happens with your with your biochemistry. Uh, insomnia, skin conditions like eczema, different allergies, things that you're allergic to, um, advanced aging. Inflammation is like a fire in your body. It causes you to age quicker. And that happens because of elevated CRP levels. So what can cause elevated CRP? Uh, subluxations in your spine, which is so important that you take care of your nervous system in your spine. Genetics. Some people have what's called an IL-6 gene variant. You need to know that, right? You need to know if you have high levels of inflammation, even though you eat healthy and you think you're doing the right things. If you have that gene variant, you need to be doing some things above and beyond what you're doing right now a lot of times. So very simple, specific things. Stress increases inflammation. We have so much more stress now than we've ever had. Um, exposure to environmental toxins, that can cause inflammation. Um, I had a friend of mine who was, was diagnosed with cancer in his mid-30s, and this guy looked like he ate well, he exercised, looked like the healthiest person on planet Earth, but he got diagnosed with cancer. And we said, how the heck did that happen? Well, he went to the doctor, got some tests done, and the doctor said, you got cancer because of these environmental toxins you were exposed to 20 years ago. That's what caused the cancer. So imagine if we had known that 15 years ago, we could have prevented his cancer just by making sure that his body was detoxifying the way it was supposed to, right? Diet. So standard American diet, eating a lot of processed foods, 
uh, sometimes even eating quite what you would think is the right food is just the wrong food for you going to increase your inflammation levels nutrient deficiencies that you might not know about and it's not about just taking a multivitamin it's it's making sure that you're getting the right nutrients for you um, so, so that your inflammation levels are low. Your CRP should be as low as it can possibly be. So that one is so incredibly important because it tells us what's this underlying inflammation in your body and then what can we do about it, all right? So we can intervene and then we can retest later on and we can say, oh, that CRP went from a seven down to a one and a half. Look how good you're doing now, all right? This is, we know this is working, right? So we're not guessing. Um, I had a, a patient recently, I did a test on this and she's another good example, somebody who ate well, exercise, you know, eats better than most of the people watching this video. Um, but she's hugely inflamed, can't lose weight. She's tried keto, tried all kinds of different diets, can't lose weight. She's got pain in her knees, you know, pain in her joints. And she's like, I don't know what's wrong with me. So we did a test, we got her CRP back and it was off the charts. So ridiculously high. And I said, Hey, you're, you're doing so many of these other things, right? We got to get to the bottom of that. So did a, did a food sensitivity test and I found out the foods that she was eating every day were causing the inflammation. Even though most people would think those are healthy foods, it was causing this massive inflammation in her body because what she wasn't doing all with it. So got it changing her diet, a couple different supplements, and she already started losing weight, feels a million percent better, the brain fog going away, and we never would have known that had we not started here, right? We, we just would have been guessing and guessing and guessing like she's been doing for 20 years, and she's tired of doing that. So that's why getting that inflammation level so, uh, so important. Now, the second thing that this test, which is equally, if not more important, is vitamin D levels, okay? Vitamin D levels are responsible for about 200 different things in your body, uh, master control for several different hormones. I always say if I had $1 to spend, I would spend it on vitamin D. People always ask me, how much vitamin D do I need, do I need to it? D do I need to take? I don't answer that question anymore because the, the answer is usually wrong. And here's what I'll, t why I'll tell you that in a minute. So this is disease incidence prevention and vitamin D levels, okay? So these are the vitamin D levels across the top here. This is 68, this is 60, this is 50, this is 40. Um, and I'll have so many people get tested, or right? so that's the difference between going to the doctor and getting um, a sick care test, right? Which is like, they tell you your cholesterol is high, but they don't tell you why your cholesterol is high. Uh, they don't tell you anything other than you take this cholesterol medication, or you have high triglycerides, eat less sugar. I had a friend of mine bring me his test and he's like, my triglycerides are crazy. I'm like, did they explain what a triglyceride was? And they're like, nah, they didn't explain that at all. Of course they don't because it's not functional medicine. That's sick care medicine, right? That's emergency medicine. Um, this, is what, this is what I call functional medicine, which means we're going to look at what's going on in your body. We're going to sit down and explain it to you so you actually understand and empower to do something about the information and we're going to change the function of your body, okay? So, but in that sick care medicine, they'll say anything from 30 to, to 100 is normal okay they're just looking for normal they're not looking for optimal but what they don't tell you is optimal doesn't happen until you're over here like you're not getting any beneficial effect of vitamin d until you're over here so you can have a, a vitamin d level of 30 out of a patient recently she's like yeah my doctor told me a couple years ago it was uh, normal and we looked at it, it was 31 so here's what 31 means 31 means that she wasn't getting protected against any of these diseases over here so this is like cancers all combined for you to get any protection that, that starts at 40 and and there's a i think it's 35 percent prevent prevention uh, or, or reduced risk of cancer at 40 vitamin d level wouldn't you rather have 75 percent less cancer at 52 when that's like might cost you 15 cents a day in a in a supplement i mean you, do, you don't want to know what normal is you want to know what optimal is okay um, same thing with breast cancer, 50% protection at 52, but you're, once you get to the 66 range, 67% reduced risk of breast cancer, ovarian cancer, type 1 diabetes, multiple sclerosis, all of these things, none of it happens. The protection doesn't happen over here where the majority of people are in our country. The protection happens over here. And so again, people ask, how much should I take? And I don't answer that unless I have a test in front of me because then I can answer it intelligently because I used to say 5,000 IUs. Now here's what's crazy. People would be like, that's way too high. You know, doctors would be like, you don't need to take 5,000 IUs. That's way too high um, because the recommended daily allowance is 400 IUs, which would protect you against rickets over here. <laughs> okay, you can remember rickets. Nobody's got rickets anymore. That's what 400 IU does for you. That's why I don't believe in the RDA for just about anything, the recommended daily allowance. Um, so over here where you actually want to be protected, the lady that I was taking 5,000 IUs I told you about, she tested at 32. So 5,000 IUs was half of what she should have taken. She should have been taking 10,000 IUs to get her blood levels up over here. So I'll show you some things with the immune system in a minute. That needs to be between 60 and 80. So you want those levels to be between 60 and 80. The majority of people are down over here. Again, that's why we get tested. 
So when it comes to like your immune system, why vitamin D is so important. Uh, this is a, a study done looking at vitamin D levels, okay, and looked at conclusions. Vitamin D supplementation was safe and it protected against acute respiratory tract infection overall. So if you're worried about COVID or the flu or any acute respiratory infection like this, vitamin D is your best insurance against that. Not a flu shot, not a vaccine, vitamin D, something as simple as that. Um, what else does vitamin D for you? Vitamin D do for you? Improves heart health because it reduces inflammation. Um, helps manage blood sugar levels. Keeps your blood sugar levels down. Helps with concentration and memory. Very important for your brain. We just talked about it preventing it against cancer. Enhances the immune system. Facilitates hormone regulation. If your hormones are out of whack with like menopause or low testosterone in men, or if your if your thyroid levels are out of whack, vitamin D is at the root cause of of so many of those, and it's a simple fix. Um, but these two studies really sum it up for me in vitamin D. Um, this was Archives of Internal Medicine, 2007. It says raising the minimum year-round vitamin D level to 60 nanograms per mole, which is on that right side of that chart I was showing you, would prevent 58,000 cases of breast cancer and 49,000 cases of colon cancer and 75% of the deaths from these diseases. Guys, that's it right there. If we really want to stop breast cancer... It's not more Susan G. Coleman Foundation. It's it's give your body what it needs because vitamin D turns off those genes that cause cancer. Like even like a BRCA gene, vitamin D has been shown to mitigate the risk of those genes. I mean, it's, it's an absolutely incredible thing. The problem is most people don't have anywhere near enough. I've done 40 vitamin D tests in the last probably 30 days here, and I've seen 38 of them have been vitamin D deficient, including me, who had been I've been taking 5,000 IUs. I took 10,000 for a long time because I had psoriasis. Took 10,000 IUs for a long time, figured, okay, I'm in the sun enough now. I ride my bike, right? Um, so I'm in the sun, you know, a couple hours a day in my, in my cycling outfit, and I still came back at 33, which means my body doesn't absorb vitamin D nearly as well as, I guess, some other people's do. I need to be taking 10,000 IUs, which I am now, um, and now look what's happening. I'm reducing my risk of, of colon cancer uh, by 75% of, you know, I, my risk of death from colon cancer goes down 75% just by doing that one simple thing. That's why I don't guess anymore. Um, and if you think you can get it from the sun, no, you can't. Um, if you live in Florida and you're on the, on the beach for three hours a day in your bathing suit, you might have enough vitamin D, but the rest of us just not even close, especially in Colorado. Um, and then the, the other one, so over a three year period, taking adequate amounts of vitamin D reduced the incidence of colds and flus to nearly zero. So instead of a yearly flu shot, what people should be getting is their vitamin D levels checked. Simple and easy. So uh, I always, my motto is test, don't guess. Uh, the, the reason I say that is because these people are important to me. This is my family. This is Samantha and Dylan and Jana, my wife. This is one of our trips to Galveston a couple of years ago. Uh, my, my wife's from, from Texas. So we go down there with her family. And uh, just this particular vacation was just awesome. I remember just had a blast running with Samantha on the beach every morning. And Dylan and I would go for bike rides. And, you know, there was this inflatable kayak. We'd take them out in the water on. Um, just had a blast. You know, my wife and I got to hang out and go for walks at sunset. Just awesome times, like building our family and our memories. And I always have this picture to remind me that it's, it's also very possible for me to not take care of my health and not know these numbers and to lifestyle myself out of that picture. And that's what's tragic to me is that if I don't know my vitamin D levels, I get colon cancer, I die, I'm not in that picture anymore. I want to be, I want to be in the picture, right? Um, same thing with, with C-reactive protein. If I'm massively inflamed, then the genes that were passed on to me from all the males in my family, I'm going to be that next person dying of a heart attack like my uncle did in his 40s. And I don't want to be that person because I want to be in that picture. So in order for me not to lifestyle myself out, I, I get tested, right? So the vitamin D test is really simple. Um, vitamin D and CRP, it comes together in a kit. It's no blood draw. It's just a finger stick test. We send it into the lab. They send it back. And then we sit down and do a consultation with you. So it includes the testing, what's called an um, environmental risk evaluation, which looks at seven different areas of your lifestyle. It looks at your nutrition, looks at your exercise, looks at your sleep, your detox, your hormones. And we can really paint a picture of, okay, what's causing these things, right? So um, if your vitamin D level is low, we can teach you how to fix that. If your C-reactive protein levels are high, we can teach you how to fix that based on your lifestyle. Um, so the testing there is just 199 uh, heck, I mean, at 199, I always say if, like if this is uh, if that seems expensive to you, I haven't done my job explaining how important this is. 
because you always get a choice with your health. You can spend a little bit of money now and have health as you move forward, or you can not do anything and then just give all the money back uh, to the nursing home later. And that I was just talking to a patient recently. Her husband never took care of himself, would never spend a dime on his health, would never spend a dime on what he ate or putting, you know, taking care of himself. And he gave all the money back later because now he's in the nursing home and it's $80,000 a year out of their now, you know, what was a retirement account for him to live in a nursing home until he dies every single year. And it never should have been that way. We just would have, you know, invested in his health a little bit over here. You know, I'm, I'm as cheap as anybody. I don't like spending money, but I love investing money. And this is the best investment I'll ever make is in myself and in my health. Because when we're young, we spend all of our time, you know, in, in health trying to get money. And then when we're older, we're just going to spend all of our money trying to get our health back. And it just doesn't work that way. So $199 for the test. Um, if you're ready to do that, you just email me at eshoemake1 at gmail.com. It's eshoemake1 at gmail. You can copy that down. Shoot me that email. Um, I will uh, get that to the team. We'll get the ERE sent to you. Uh, the test kit, you just come pick it up. We usually do that right there in the office, pop it in the mail for you, um, send it in. And within a, you know, a couple of weeks, we're sitting down doing your consultation and knowing what you finally need to do to, to fix this either inflammatory condition you're having, looking at your vitamin D, knowing what your risk factors are, and then you don't have to guess anymore. You know. And that's what's cool about this. You don't have to do this vitamin D test every year. You do it. You intervene. You might do a test later on. Just see where you're at now. And then that's the vitamin D you need to take the rest of your life. Super easy. Super simple. Um, so if you're ready to do that, shoot me an email at eshoemake1 at gmail and we will get you rolling.